Let's go ahead and pick. Hi, this is Sue at Garden Spot Acres. Welcome. Today we are in the process of making some green tomato salsa. Um, nature kind of threw me a curveball and decided to send a bug or a virus or something that is making my tomatoes not ripen. Instead, they get a little spot on them and they um, fall off the vine before they're ripe. So, plan B is to make some green tomato salsa. I have already picked and dug out six of my uh, tomato plants and here so far is my harvest of green tomatoes from six plants. Quite a few. I think I'll be making a lot of green tomato salsa. So uh, let's see, I have um, eight, I still have ten plants to pick from. And you can kind of see in there, lots of green tomatoes. I have a couple of tomatoes that are beginning to ripen. Hopefully they haven't been hit yet and I can pull them and um, they will ripen into red tomatoes. So anyway, I'm gonna continue working here in the garden and get these last two plants out of this box. And uh, then we'll head into the kitchen and start making some green tomato salsa. Well, thanks for joining me here in the Garden Spot Acres Kitchen. I'm continuing this mission of using up these green tomatoes. I have a bucket full here behind me. I've got a bowl full here. And I still have nearly half a cart full outside waiting to be processed. But as you can see, some of my tomatoes that were totally green when I picked them are beginning to turn red. So as I'm working through this bowl, I'm going to pull these out uh, put these in uh, a cardboard box that I have lined with brown grocery bags and then I will cover them with just an old towel and within a couple days I'm going to have probably a can or full of red tomatoes ready to go. All right so let's take a look at what we need here for this green tomato salsa. Obviously the green tomatoes. I need to have oh I would say 10 to 20 hot peppers. You can use a variety, you can mix peppers, I have some jalapenos that I uh, bought and I have hot cherry peppers that came right out of our garden so I wanted to use up those. I also am going to need a cup of lime juice. I have that ready to go. This will include about six cloves of garlic. So these I'm just going to make my life easier and when I have the food processor running I'll throw them right in with a batch of the tomatoes. I also need to have about four cups of chopped onion. Now I did this onion ahead of time because I didn't think you'd want to see me cry. Um, they are quite potent. This is actually a combination of red onions and I had um, a couple of Walla Walla onions in the refrigerator and we still have a few of our own onions uh, that we grew in the garden. So I threw some of those in. So it's a, just a mixture of onion. Whatever you have, whatever you want to use is fine. And also I need to have, um, well, I'd say about two cups of cilantro. I buy this in a two ounce package, so I'm just go going to use the whole package. And I'm kind of picky, I don't want these stems in, so I will go through this whole batch of cilantro and pick the leaves off the stems. So that's gonna take me a little bit of time. All right, now as for the tomatoes, um, these are simply going to be chopped up. Give them a rough chop so I can put them into quarters. I'm going to put them into uh, the food processor and they're, they don't need to be very fine. They're going to cook down a little bit once um, they're in the pot and on the stove. So let me spend some time getting all these veggies chopped up and I'll be back with you in a few minutes. All right, I have had originally this bowl heaping full of tomatoes quartered and I processed them. I wanted to show you just the consistency. Um, I just pulse them for four or five times, some bigger chunks, some smaller chunks. You could certainly chop your tomatoes by hand if you wanted all bigger chunks of um, tomato in your green tomato salsa. 
Uh, I prefer mine a little bit finer. All right, so while I was um, chopping, I came upon some tomatoes. I wanted to show you this. This is the reason I have so many green tomatoes. You can see the spot on there. Something stung or maybe a fungus of some sort. I don't know. Um, but this was causing all of my tomatoes to drop off the vines. So that's why I picked off all the green tomatoes from eight plants. I still have eight more plants to do. I don't know what I'm going to do with all these green tomatoes. But anyway, if you have any idea what caused this on so many of my tomatoes, please let me know in the comments below. All right, I'm gonna get back to work, finish up prepping my peppers, my garlic. I'll be throwing the garlic in with the peppers when I process them. And I'll be back with you when I have everything processed and ready to go. All my prep work is done with the tomatoes, the onions, the peppers, and the garlic, and I have my cilantro ready also. I wanted to give you a little tip before I get this on the stove. Uh, the green tomatoes, just from being processed and sitting here, have already begun to release a lot of moisture. So I don't know if you can see into the pan there or not, but the idea here is to cook this down for a little bit, about 10 minutes. So I want to help this along a little bit and remove some of that tomato moisture. Now I'm using a larger pot than I typically need but I want to give you a little suggestion here also something that will help with that. Um, usually I will put a strainer down into my pot push down on it and as that moisture comes into the strainer I'll scoop that out and that way my tomatoes are still in the pot, the juice is gone. So if my uh, pot were a little bit more full or a little smaller, I would be able to show you that a little bit better. But that's a good tip to um, strain off some of the juice, but keep the pulp in the pot. All right, let me get rid of that. So we have here 14 cups of chopped tomatoes. Into the pot goes four cups of my chopped onions. I have, oh, I probably did about maybe a dozen peppers all together and six cloves of garlic. All right, that goes in the pot. Now, the recipe actually originally says to add a cup of lime juice at this point, but I'm gonna wait because I want this to come to a boil first. I wanna to try to take out a little bit more of the moisture. And then when I add the cilantro and the seasonings, that's when I'll put the lime juice in. So it is gonna um, get a little bit more juice in it once it comes to a boil. All right, so it's gonna go on the stove, it's gonna come to a boil, um, and I'll be back with you in a few minutes. Well, it didn't take long for my tomato mixture to come to a boil. Uh, you can see it's steaming. Now the last step of the cooking process is to add in one cup of lime juice, two ounces of fresh cilantro. I'm thinking about growing this next year. Have my own and maybe growing some oregano also. We'll see what next year brings for the garden. All right, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, the last bit of seasonings. I have two teaspoons of salt. I have a tablespoon of dried oregano and um, a tablespoon plus two teaspoons of dried cumin. And that all goes in. Give that a good stir. And this is gonna simmer for about 10 minutes. And at that point, I want to um, check the seasoning. Maybe it needs more salt, maybe it needs more cumin, maybe more oregano, we'll see. So I'll give this all a stir, simmer it for 10 minutes. My green tomato salsa has simmered now for 10 minutes. Chuck came through the kitchen at just the right time to give it a test. He suggested a little more salt, so I added another teaspoon of salt, and now we're good to go. Now, my recipe does not call for this next step, but I do like a little bit of uh, puree in my salsa. So I'm going to use my stick blender. I recommend this highly um, if you don't have one. It comes in very handy for this type of thing when you're blending hot liquids. Um, it just seems to be safer, but you can certainly do this in your food processor. Just be careful. You might want to take about half of your salsa, puree it, and then mix it back in. All right, so as I use this, I want to make sure that this bottom 
stays totally submerged. And I'm just gonna give it a couple seconds, really. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so you see it makes it just a little bit creamier, a little bit more like a red salsa. All right, so that is it. You have my green tomato salsa recipe. You can, at this point, obviously eat it fresh. You can package it up into freezer containers. You can process it in a water bath for about 20 minutes. Uh, it's really up to you. I've done both ways and both ways work very well. Um, I am going to let this cool down at least to room temperature before I package it into freezer containers. Um, if you have any ideas for what I can do with all the green tomatoes I have left on my garden, please let me know, give me some ideas. I do plan on making a green tomato mincemeat. Uh, that'll be coming up probably pretty soon in my kitchen. So anyway, if you uh, like today's episode of green tomato salsa, please like, share, comment, uh, subscribe if you have it. We would really appreciate that here at Garden Spot Acres. Well, that's the end of my day. Well, actually my morning. But anyway, um, have a good rest of the day.